Hello everybody, my name is Sumi Hilal, I'm the editor-in-chief of Atelier Computer, and I'm here to interview Professor Konstantinos Patsakis. Professor Patsakis is co-author of one of Computer's Outlook issue uh, in January 2015. Professor Patsakis is co-author of one of the papers of Computer's Outlook issue in January 2015. paper is titled Interoperable, Privacy-Aware, E-Participation within Smart City. Professor Patsakis, uh, let's start by telling the audience a little bit about yourself. Uh, hi, Sumi. Uh, it's nice to meet you. Uh, so I'm currently, prof I'm currently a lecturer uh, in Greece at the Department of Informatics of the University of Piraeus. Uh, I have worked in the past uh, in uh, Rovira i Virgili University at uh, the UNESCO Chair of Data Privacy and uh, Trinity College uh, at the Distributed Systems uh, Group. Um, currently, my main research is focused on cryptography, security, and privacy, especially focusing on uh, applications of smart cities and embedded uh, scenarios uh, uh, where people uh, are participating with the mobile devices. Great. Right. Uh, well, let, let's talk about the paper now. Uh, you make a very good point in your paper through a motivating scenario that showed how, on the one hand, citizen participation could be essential to many smart city applications. Yet, on the other hand, citizens will need to, to have some privacy assurance for them to participate. So there is a stalemate or a dilemma here, and I would like to I'd like you to explain in layman terms how your paper proposes to solve this dilemma. So uh, the current state is that uh, most of the users are uh, very willing to hand over the data to big corporations uh, in exchange of, acts, uh, of services that uh, they, are they are currently using. For example, a user is willing to send his contacts or, uh, his uh, photos or whatever in exchange of a service which uh, are, will allow him to talk with uh, a friend of his who is uh, located somewhere remotely and have a video chat or whatever. But when it comes to applications where uh, the, the um, but when it comes to applications for example where user needs to exchange data to send data to some stakeholders which are provided by the state, many users are um, very reluctant to do it because they're fearing of uh, examples of big brother situations or scenarios, et cetera. So there's a definite need in order to reassure people that what we're doing is not disclosing their privacy, and on the other hand, get fine-grained data that you can use in order to provide personalized services. So it's uh, a challenge of how to gather data, motivate people to share it, and simultaneously do not disclose uh, their identity. What we're trying to do in the paper is discuss um, a scheme which uh, more or less uh, manages to uh, to fix all these parameters and all these different factors. Uh, our paper introduces a new protocol which can be used in order to send data almost in real time without, without disclosing the identities of individuals. So more or less, uh, an abstracted authority can uh, retrieve uh, fine-grained data depending on uh, the use. This, can, this data can be aggregated, or if we want, this data can be uh, individual values, so that uh, this data can be retrieved almost, as I said, in real time, but without disclosing who sent what. Moreover, in order to circumvent the problem of scalability because we're talking about urban scenarios where you can have millions of users. We have introduced uh, the notion of, lo of local aggregators, which uh, 
can uh, not only uh, uh, aggregate the local values, but uh, with some tricks, we can blind the the the, 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 the aggregated value so that even the aggregator doesn't know the, the exact values. And, and the, the, the aggregator have to be uh, a trusted like government agency or a, a, um, if government is ever trusted, but uh, the, the aggregator has to be a trusted entity in some sense. The trust is the trust that we require is the minimal. So in our case, what we what we say is that uh, I trust the registration process, so that the local uh, the local uh, aggregator that I have contains some users. Uh, so for example, it, it takes it it only takes two. Uh, users which are uh, which are good users, not malicious, in order to provide this, uh, both of these uh, users uh, privacy. Even if all the other users uh, are malicious and disclose their values, the values of, of mm -hmm. the two individuals will not be disclosed. This is uh, more or less a very good, uh, uh, a very good uh, trust model. Uh, in our case, of course, we are working on the semi-honest model, which says that everyone is going to keep the protocol uh, and not play with it uh, maliciously. So everyone is uh, will adhere to the protocol, will not change the messages of the others. Privacy of the individuals will not be disclosed. The, the protocol that we have is based on a very well-known uh, cryptographic um, assumption which is uh, one of the most basics that we have. So we have some security guarantees that if uh, the users send their data, their privacy will not be disclosed, which is uh, another guarantee that uh, the whole thing is working mm -hmm. as it should. Very good. Well, you also, you also mentioned that your algorithm and, and, and your work address issues of performance and interoperability. Can you explain a little bit uh, how is that factored in in your work? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Um, you also mentioned that performance and interoperability are addressed by your work. Can you, can you okay. explain that to the audience? Yes. So in, in most of the other protocols, what you are doing is that you are using heavy computations. Uh, for example, we have something in cryptography that we call pairing. Pairing is uh, a very beautiful operation that you can have and very useful. But it turns out that uh, the computing effort that you have for it is very big. So if you're talking about small devices, uh, it's uh, very, very uh, difficult to perform it. So what we do is that um, we try, we create a trick in order to make a, a pairing, to prolong the, uh, the the time that we need to perform each pairing. By using this, we improve the performance, and depending on what uh, what is uh, the protocol that we're using, because it has uh, two flavors currently, uh, if the speeding up can be up to 400, 400 times of what other the, uh, the state of the art was using. Uh, is this is very also, important. Yes? Is there any saving in, in energy consumption? Of course, if you're talking about uh, re re removing, decreasing the, uh, the computational effort, it has a com uh, it decreases the, the energy consumption as well. It is very important that uh, what we are talking about and, uh, f and uh, what we are discussing is going to be implemented in uh, devices such as, such as smartphones or as uh, smart meters. So these devices are quite small, and their computation uh, and the computations that they have uh, are very demanding. So, the the more the less that you, the, the less computation that you have, like that, the better the performance and the less the the, the energy consumption. What we want to make is something that can that, that can really be used by small devices. Uh, in another scenario that we're working currently, uh, we are using uh, this protocol in order to aggregate the values uh, in a smart grid. In this way, we are decreasing, for example, the, um, 
uh, interval between its measurement to a lower than a second when, for example, the QEK standard, I believe, is around uh, some minutes, showing that this uh, pro protocol can be used in many applications and uh, that increase, improve their performance greatly. Very good. Well, um, I have okay. one more question about how your work can be applicable to the broader, uh, broader uh, uh, crowd sensing application, not necessarily government or municipality uh, application, but broader crowd sensing in, in smart city or, or otherwise. Here, you basically try to recruit workers to, to crowd sense, and they all also have privacy concerns. So my question to you is, how do you envision your work to be cast into a trust model um, that can convince users to participate in a similar way that secure connections have convinced users over the years to transmit sensitive information like credit card numbers and so forth. People feel comfortable um, by virtue of learning and understanding that secure connection is a good thing, is a trusted thing. So here we have a good body of work, um, but how can you penetrate uh, to persuade users, or how do you present to work as a trust uh, uh, instrument so that they can actually uh, uh, be encouraged to, to participate, to e-participate, or to crowd sense? Uh, let me put it this way. Firstly, I have to say that uh, convincing users to use uh, such uh, um, such means in order to send their information is not very easy. Uh, in many cases, for example, uh, you need gamification aspects in order to to show them that, uh, okay, start using such applications because you are going to have an immediate um, gain in your life. So uh, providing an incentive is uh, quite um, uh, difficult right now. Uh, in this case that we are discussing, we are they're saying that, okay, if the proper, proper incentive is used uh, so that people are more or less thinking of using the, the, such, um, uh, such ways of interacting with their city, their government, or whatever, then what we are saying is that this can be done securely and privately. Uh, when the, what uh, we have implemented is more or less open source. Uh, so people can see what we are doing, how the data is sent, and to whom, to whom the, this, data, this data is sent. Uh, this can provide the transparency to users that, it, that in many cases is needed in order mm -hmm. to convince them that, okay, the proper people are receiving the information, and my information cannot be analyzed as individual, and what the, what the other side is going to see is just the aggregated value or an individual value which doesn't which doesn't identify me. And this is an extra motivation for the for the users, not the only motivation. What currently what uh, we are currently seeing is that, for example, cities are turning into smart cities. And we are discussing about dynamic allocation of resources or uh, other such things. From the point that users are convinced to stop using their cars and use a crowdsourced car that is going to be dynamically allocated, we have many years. Right now, they don't have the incentive. Everyone wants to use his car. Or, for example, people like to see the lights in the city and they are not comfortable enough to tell them that, you know, if no one is passing, I'm going to shut them down because uh, this is not uh, efficient and it's not green enough. Some people is, are going to be scared. So by the time that we uh, implement some solutions, we need to show them that, firstly, these things work. Secondly, these things are not identifying people. And thirdly, try to find a game in the beginning 
in order to motivate them and start using the, uh, such applications. Professor Patsakis, thank you very much for your insights. Okay.